Welcome back. Now, the bloodbath that, that is Syria, but oh, so neglected. A sad junior slaughters hundreds, maybe thousands of people by now, but is still in power, and to a large extent, the world merely looks on. Not much oil, of course, out there. Now, Lee Smith is from the Hudson Institute in Washington, D.C. He joins me now. Welcome to you. Thanks very much for having me. Now, I'm, I'm a bit confused by Syria because... Assad's father was, I mean, he was a dictator. He, he was in many ways a, a brutal man, but he seemed to have a certain popularity. His son, uh, well known optometrist, of course, he, uh, although he's opposed violently by many people, he has the support of, of a number of Syrians. The Christian minority largely support him. Even the tiny Jewish community in, in Damascus, that one little synagogue that he funds, they seem to support him. So he's not universally detested in the country, is he? Well, uh, and this is actually unfortunate. I've written about this a bit for the Weekly Standard, uh, the fact that the Christian community does support Assad. It's actually rather grotesque. Um, they are concerned. Look, some of their concerns are understandable. They're worried, about, they're worried about aspects of the opposition. They look and they see some Sunni Islamists. They see some very dangerous people. So understandably, understandably they're concerned about that. Nonetheless, this is a regime that is slaughtering people. That has been slaughtering, you know, you mentioned the numbers, and actually we're, we're indeed into the thousands right now. It's probably around 3,000, if not higher. Um, so this regime has been slaughtering people. Most of them are Sunnis who are members of the opposition. So the fact that the Christian minority in this country is taking, uh, is basically taking the regime's side against, uh, you know, uh, against people is, is nauseating. As far as I'm concerned, there's absolutely no, you know, no, no basis on which they can uh, premise their Christianity of their effectively cheering for the slaughter of other Syrians. It's, it's disgusting. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, there was one rather ugly letter written by one Christian leader. It's not a completely uh, uh, united uh, no, There have been a number of quotes. Yeah, there have been a number of quotes in the papers about different, uh, different Christian clerics from, you know, both from the Catholic and Orthodox community mm -hmm. that have come out supportive of the regime. And while I'm talking, I mean, I, this is also the case in Lebanon where the Maronite patriarch, Bashar al-Rai, who's planning on visiting Washington, visiting us soon here in Washington at some point, has said the same thing. He's supporting this regime because he's worried about how it's going to affect the Christians in Syria as well as Lebanon. Again, these concerns are well-founded. They're based in historical reality. Nonetheless, the fact that Christians are siding with a dictatorial regime is repugnant. There are Christians in Lebanon, like the leader of the Lebanese forces, Samir Jaja, who, uh, paradoxically enough, has a, you know, has a history of violence himself for which he served time. Mm. But Jaja has now come out and he said this is obscene, the fact that Christians are siding with murderous dictators. I entirely agree with them. Well, Lebanon obviously is a different situation. Far larger Christian population. It was dominant in the country for generations. Now power sharing to a certain extent. But you, look, you, you know far more about this than I do. You know why Syrian Christians are behaving thus. Because in Iraq, Saddam Hussein w w was a grotesque monster, but he didn't yeah. single out Christians. In fact, Tariq Aziz is a Christian. He had other Christians behind him. He was a secularist to a large extent, and Christians were treated well. And Assad has done the same. He's tried to divide his country, and Christians realize that in Syria, what, 10 percent, maybe yeah. even more in Syria, that they actually can, can live as Christians, whereas if there was an Islamic yeah. government, that would be very difficult. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you talk about Iraq, and the, you know, your, your point is well taken, and I'll even point to something more recent. We saw what happened with the Coptic Christian community uh, this Sunday in Cairo, mm -hmm. when the military, you know, when the military killed, I believe the number right now we have is 23 cops. Yep. And it's terrible. There is, again, this is what I say when I say that it is true. There is a historical reality to this. And it's understandable why Christians are worried about Sunni fanatics, why they're worried about these different militants who will kill Christians. Mm. All this is entirely understandable. The fact that they are taking open sides with the regime speaks to a number of things, not least how problematic the region is in general. Yep. But again, the fact that they're taking sides with a murderous regime, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit about to why the world seems to, relatively speaking, have done so sure. little. Now, it's obvious there's an oil dynamic here. Libya has a lot of it. Syria has ha hardly any. But when we Might, think yeah, of... Right. Considerably less. Yeah. I mean, Gaddafi had become relatively, well, irrelevant, innocuous in recent years. Assad is still a major player, allied right. to Iran. And yet we're, we're, we're doing hardly anything yeah. at all, are we? Well, look, I certainly agree. I mean... You know, Libya, as far as the United States is concerned, 
Libya uh, did not constitute a vital interest. I think that for the Europeans, uh, Libya is a vital interest. So it's understandable why the Europeans were quite concerned about getting, uh, going after Gaddafi. And I think they want to get rid of him in spite of the fact that few were uh, eager to admit this six months ago when the fighting started. But the Europeans wanted to get rid of Gaddafi. Yeah. Yes, Bashar al-Assad is a problem for U.S. interests, not least because he is the one Arab ally of the Iranians. Uh, and insofar as the Iranians wish to drive the Americans from the region and are contesting Washington for regional hegemony, the Syrians are a big issue. The Syrians are a problem for virtually every U.S. ally in the region. Not just Israel, we're also talking about the pro-democracy, uh, the pro-democracy opposition in Lebanon. We're talking about Jordan. We're talking about Turkey. Um, it's an enormous problem, this regime. So I entirely agree. The United States has a vital interest in getting rid of Bashar al-Assad. Okay. And why the, why the Obama administration does not seem to uh, recognize this at this point is frankly beyond me. You mentioned Israel there. Just last question on, on this issue. Uh, obviously, uh, there was never going to be a formal peace treaty with Syria, but the, the Syrian government was also uh, quite worldly and quite cowardly, and Israel would fly, Israeli jets would fly over, there'd be little response. They were never going to launch uh, an armed invasion to take back the Golan. If Assad does go, when he does go, there's a good chance the government that replaces him could be erratic, rather more resembling the Egyptian one we have now. Does that make Israel feel more secure or less so? Uh, well, I mean, the Israelis have been quite clear now. I mean, every senior official in the Israeli government, uh, from the prime minister, defense minister, president, foreign minister, as well as the Israeli ambassador to the United States, they've all explained that Israel has no interest in seeing this, uh, this murderous thug continue. And the reason is, I mean, the main reason is, besides, for more, besides moral reasons, the Israelis recognize that Assad has no way that he would ever be able to sign a peace deal now. He has no way to, uh, he has no, no popular legitimacy with which to strike a peace deal with the Israelis. So for the Israelis, he's absolutely irrelevant. Would he constitute more of a threat to Israel? No. I mean, there, look, in the Middle East, it can always get worse. However, it's very difficult to see how it would get worse than the Assad regime. We're talking about a regime that built nuclear, secret nuclear facilities, that has chemical warheads, that supports Hezbollah and Hamas, and that's tied with Iran. Uh, I certainly don't think right away that the, that the governing body that will replace Assad, as I believe Assad will eventually be toppled, will be a open, democratic, freedom-loving regime that will want peace and comedy with, uh, with their Jewish neighbors next door. Nonetheless, I don't think it's going to be worse than Assad. Nothing can be worse than this miserable regime. You make that point very well. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.